Yo guys, welcome back to Semper Inter TV. How are you guys doing? I'm just going to do a quick reaction to the Inter versus Juventus match that took place today in uh, China. I promised myself I wasn't going to watch this match because I was at work, but somehow in my lunchtime break I found myself watching it anyway and then even in between I was sneaking some uh, some looks because uh, it actually was a decent match. The match of course finished 1-1, uh, both teams went to penalties and then uh, Juventus unfortunately won on penalties and after the match I was uh, very happy that Antonio Conte was not happy, he said I wanted the team to win. He said I hope this loss burns for our players and that's uh, really a testament to the mentality that he's trying to bring in. It doesn't matter if it's a pre-season friendly, especially against Juve, it's never a friendly, he wants to win. Even before the match, we saw why it's not even a friendly. Uh, even the Chinese Inter fans and Juventus fans were seen clashing before the match, throwing bottles at each other, throwing insults at each other. It was quite escalating, it looked like, before the officials intervened. And uh, you can see there's, a, there's still a bit of spice to it wherever, wherever this match takes place, at whatever time this takes place. The match itself, as I said, was actually kind of enjoyable. Um, Inter played really well, especially in the first half. Um, took control of the possession, had most of the possession. At the end of the match we had 52% possession compared to the 48 of Juve, which you would expect them to have more, especially now under Sarri, who uh, you know is predisposed for this possession type football. Uh, so it showed that Inter you know, uh, took the game to Juve, especially looking at the lineups. Before the match I saw the lineups and I was uh, saying to my friends that we were going to get smoked, uh, but we didn't. Uh, Juve had pretty much you know their starting 11 out, uh, apart from a couple of players and uh, yeah Inter as you know we're still without our strikers Perisic once again played up front as a second striker next to Esposito who you know 17 year old does the best he can so a few of these stand up performers for me uh, first of all Stefano Sensi once again um, he was okay against Man United but today he was really the stand up performer for me um, sprayed the ball around really well shows his technique his set pieces, I'm really impressed by his set pieces, always you know, delivering uh, balls in uh, dangerous areas, almost scored from a uh, free kick as well. And then uh, of course the goal came from his uh, dangerous corner, whipped in, that uh, deflected in off uh, uh, Juventus's record sign in uh, at the back, uh, De Ligt. His first goal for Juve is technically for Inter. The other standout performer for me was Danilo D'Ambrosio who uh, marshaled um, Cristiano Ronaldo really well throughout the whole match, didn't let him have a kick really, uh, was always you know, holding on to his shirt or his body, you know, annoying him, you could tell Ronaldo was getting annoyed, uh, made some good tackles and he, uh, you know, as he always is, quite dangerous when he goes forward in uh, set-piece situations. And also Milan Skriniar was also back on top form, struggled a little bit against Man United as we discussed last episode, but you know, as we know, this is pre-season. It takes these bigger players a bit more time to uh, get accustomed to the rhythms of a football match. Also, I have to mention that Dalbert, Dalberto Carlos, looked like a football player for two matches in a row now. So uh, this is the biggest uh, miracle that Antonio Conte has managed to work ever since he's come in. Looks more comfortable in this, uh, you know, five at the back or three at the back formation, however you want to call it, as a wing back, because he has a little bit less defensive duties and a bit more freedom to roam up front and uh, looks like he's uh, the Antonio Pintos uh, medicine is really working for him was up and down the wing the whole match even though you know the conditions out there look super humid and hot um, and I was really impressed with him not as a performance in general you know it wasn't amazing it's just if you compare him to last season <laughs> then it's a it's a big difference same goes for Candreva if you compare him to last season, he's not making you know stupid mistakes and passes. He's actually putting putting some good crosses, putting some good passes, putting some good slide tackles. So um, Antonio Conte is really you know upping the level of uh, our average players. And up front, you know, Esposito gave his all, but next to him, Perisic, of course, is uh, playing as a second striker. Is not really his position. He's trying to get used to that that position and the movements that he needs to make. I think Antonio Conte has to kind of continue with him at the moment because we don't have other options. Lautaro still hasn't returned from his Copa America vacation and we're still looking to sign, you know, either Dzeko or Lukaku. Um, so it looks like, you know, uh, with Pushkas has also come back in from his loan. Uh, he's added an extra body in there. But uh, Samuel Longo again proved that, you know, he's definitely not good enough to play at Inter. 
One player I was a little bit more disappointed with was Gagliardini. I'm hoping that he improves the season under Antonio Conte. Um, but in these first few uh, preseason matches, we haven't really seen anything of sorts from Gallia. Um, defensively today, he was quite good. He put in some good tackles and of course he has a bit of physicality, uh, which we don't have at the moment in midfield. And uh, Vecino has also come back, as I said last episode. So um, he's still kind of recovering from his injury that he suffered at the Copa America. So let's see how long it takes him to uh, get back into the starting eleven. Barella should start from the beginning next match. Again, he came on as a substitute today. Um, didn't make as much of an impact as last time, but I'm hoping to see him start next time ahead of Gagliardini or Sensi just to see how it uh, fits in with the team. Other moments that caught my eye, of course, were the way Inter played out from the back a few times. Very impressive. Uh, not impressive in terms of playing out from back. Uh, you know, Spalletti uh, really tried to implement that in his two years at Inter, so there's nothing new there. But just the way they did it was very Antonio Conte style. The pattern of play that they uh, came out with, you know, with the, uh, the overlapping runs and the, someone coming deep and someone coming uh, running past is uh, very reminiscent of Antonio Conte's Italy teams and the Chelsea teams. You can see those movements are almost memorised and it's good to see that the players are taking those uh, instructions in from Antonio Conte. We were also much more dangerous going forward compared to the Man United match where we only created from set pieces. We had a few good chances and there was good interplay and in general, as I said, the passing was quite good. And we're starting to see the identity. We're definitely starting to see the Antonio Conte blueprint working on, on the team. So overall, very good signs from this match. Uh, quite impressed. But of course, we've got PSG on Saturday. So that's another interesting test. Hopefully we have a few more players to use uh, Godin uh, to play in that match, hopefully. So we get to see him in an Inter shirt and get used to playing with his uh, defensive partners. And maybe we've managed to sign a striker by then. Who knows? That moves me on to sort of the rumours that are going on this week. Um, after Antonio Conte moaned in that press conference as we discussed last week about not having uh, it, the players that he was expecting coming in and going out, Marotta has had a meeting with Antonio Conte and Ausilio and Zhang and uh, after the meeting he said, don't worry, we're all on the same page. The target for Inter at the moment is to try to get two strikers for Conte. Uh, Marotta said one would be uh, you know, a more experienced one, which is probably Lukaku, and then one of them would be a younger target. And the name for the younger striker has come as a surprise to most people, to me as well, and is that of uh, Leo player Rafael Liao. Um, you know, we've been linked with uh, Nicolas Pepe quite uh, heavily in the last few weeks, and you, know, you guys know that he is my dream signing, but um, Liao is the one that we are strongly linked with now. Apparently Inter are strongly considering putting in a bid for him. Um, the young Portuguese striker scored around eight goals last season in Ligue 1 and he wasn't a, uh, you know, a starter in the team. Um, so it's quite you know, an interesting link because you know, it's not a, an obvious link. Six or two, so you, know, you can clearly see he's in that type of sort of uh, Conte would want to make him into his target man if he maybe don't manage to get Lukaku or Dzeko. So overall, I'm a bit unsure about the link to Liao. Uh, I don't really know that much about him. Uh, the few times I watched Liao, he didn't actually start. Um, and in terms of Dzeko, Inter continue to press to make uh, make that signing, but Roma keep being quite stubborn. Apparently, um, they keep asking for around 20 million euros, whereas Inter not willing to budge over 15, quite rightly so, for a 33-year-old player. But um, as we've seen in the last few matches, I think uh, Edin Dzeko would really... Uh, add something extra to this team. He's a he's a ball playing centre forward, so to say, very very technical. Likes to bring in other players. He's not just about his goals, his game, and uh, that's exactly what this team need. Some reports are also saying that uh, the new Roma sporting director Petracchi is a big fan of Politano. Politano, of course, came up in the Roma youth system as well, and uh, apparently Roma are looking to maybe bring in Politano for next season. And uh, there are some rumours swelling that Inter may even use that to get Dzeko in. So, um, you know, Politano's only recently redeemed from last year's loan. It is difficult to collocate him in this uh, Antonio Conte system in a 3-5-2. The only place he would play really is in the uh, as a striker, as a second striker, with a bigger striker next to him. Um, a position that he's kind of played in before Asasuolo, where he was kind of a force nine striker. Uh, but let's see what happens in the next few few weeks. Um, let me know in the comments below, guys. What did you think of uh, Inter's performance against Juve? Was it good? Were you impressed? Who was the best player? 
comment below and always like and subscribe. Ciao.